had a chat with a federal lawmaker, Senator Gabriel Suswam, who was a former governor of Benue State, to understand why it appears that people in the northern part of the country are more vulnerable to falling into poverty. The economy in the north is driven by agriculture and it needs and it's subsistence agriculture. So what you need is able-bodied people to be able to be in the villages uh, to engage in agriculture at the subsistence level. Subsistence level, but when you aggregate that, you now have it contributing greatly to the GDP of the state and of the nation. But consistently, um, uh, for reasons that are obvious, there has been this migration over a long period of time. One of the reasons is that most of the young men in the north are now more educated, they have gone to school, so they see no reason why they should remain in the rural areas. So once there is that consistent movement, or migration rather, of able-bodied people who ordinarily would have engaged in agriculture, which is the stable mainstay of the economy of the north, into semi-urban centers, they are there looking for white-collar jobs. And so <clears throat> nobody is working. And so poverty gradually set in. The people who have moved into semi-urban centers are not doing anything meaningful that can enhance the aggregate economic activities of those areas. And because they have left the villages, where ordinarily they would have been meaningfully engaged and contributing to the economy of their own environment, those places where they have left also are open to abject poverty. Now, would you say that leaders from the north have over time failed to address the poverty issue in the northern part of the country? Well, to some extent, yes, and to some, no. Uh, yes, because uh, as leaders, uh, you, we, uh, you know, there's this expectation that policies and decisions would have been taken to address this a long time ago. That that has not been done, yes, leadership is responsible. But again, followership, uh, the, the, the average person in the North also, uh, over a long period of time, uh, have focused, moved away from what they used to know best. Like I said, the, the entire North, the entire North, were engaged in agriculture. Uh, based on the comparative advantage that we had. If we go to the far north then, they used to farm a lot of cotton. Cotton, most people have moved away from it because the industries that used to take the raw materials have collapsed. Uh, if we move to where they do grains, desert has encroached so much that it's no longer feasible for those people to engage in grain farming. And those people move to semi-urban centers looking for alternatives for, for, for survival. Those alternatives are not there. So it is not so much that it is the leadership that has totally failed. Yes, leadership, to some extent, yes, I agree that uh, to some extent we have failed uh, uh, as leaders in the north. But then there are other physical factors which are beyond leadership control that have also played part in creating uh, the poverty situations in the north. Are you worried that the North lags, you know, behind the South in every human capital outcome? Uh, I should be worried, yes, because, you see, <clears throat> there is a historical perspective to this as well, you know, and, uh, and, and you know that the North is basically landlocked. And uh, when you have a situation like that uh, in a modern economy where uh, the coastal areas, you know, have leverage over landlocked areas, you know, is, is something that there is little that you can do in that regard. For instance, Lagos is where you have all the ships coming in. Most of the import come to Lagos. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the commercial activities in those areas are far more than the commercial activities in a place maybe like Kano. Kano basically, like I said, depended on agricultural economy, where people were farming granules and other, you know, grains. And uh, you had uh, a marketing um, outfit that were, you know, able to absorb those uh, grains and those products that were coming in. That is no longer possible because people have moved from that uh, subsistence economy to modern economy where 
you know, you can no longer say that you, sub, you, you exist based on subsistence economy. Now, you go to Port Harcourt, for instance, you have oil, you have all the imports coming through Port Harcourt and most of the coastal areas. It is not as if the North want to find themselves in a situation where they have found themselves. But God has created that situation. But like I said, we have not done well as leaders in the North. One would have expected that would have been wiser and would have been, you know, more thoughtful and, and taking measures long time ago to address or rather reduce the gap that exists between the North and the South. We've not done that over time. So it is getting worse by the day uh, because, first and foremost, like I say, the desert has taken almost half of the far North. It is impossible to farm, and so you can hardly uh, have people who are not literate uh, going into any other form of uh, survivor. Uh, that is the best they know. That is why criminality have completely overwhelmed the North now because people must survive. So how do we then bridge, bridge this gap? You need to have in place measures, um, social measures that can address uh, uh, the issue of poverty. I, I see the deliberate effort by the current government when they introduce these uh, social investment programs that were intended to address the poverty gap that exists. Unfortunately, the implementation has been a problem from, from reports and what we've seen. So you need a conscious and deliberate effort on the part of any government to address that. Otherwise, it will not work. That conscious effort and deliberate effort is what, is need, what we need and is what is needed now. We need that. I think that is why the current administration created a Ministry of Humanitarian where all the um, uh, social investment programs and programs that are intended or targeted at the, at the poor uh, were housed in that ministry. That ministry is expected to consciously address uh, the issues of poverty uh, in the land. Some of the interventions you've spoken about are largely at the federal level. level. What about the states? Um, at the level of state, governors too need to be deliberate. And uh, other than paying lip service, governors need to take deliberate steps in addressing poverty in their places. And uh, like in the north, we're basically an agricultural region. And so if any governor wants to address poverty in his own state in the north, he has to focus on agriculture, not just waiting for federation account month in, month, month out. Once you focus on agriculture and make sure that you address it with all seriousness, encourage the people uh, to go back, give them some incentives, we'll be able to do that. It has to come with incentives.